How's it going everyone? This is BakuBrad96 and today I am bringing you another Bakugan Geogun Rising deck profile. Today I will be going back over my Darkest Ventus Scrounge Scan deck profile. And it's kind of an update because I had worked on this deck previously. Um, not a lot has been changed, the Bakugan are the same. I did add a few Geogon, which is pretty cool. And a few cards are different, but all in all it'll be a short video because the deck is the same. I just wanted to give a better uh, profile, a uh, little update, and of course better video quality than the last. So I hope everyone enjoys, and before I get into it, I want to remind you all that 80% watching are not subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I do produce daily Bakugan content that I think everyone will enjoy. But moving on, like that button also if you enjoy Geogon because I am happy to finally add a few to the deck. And I hope they're competitively good. I did what I could and I think it's really good. Like usual, we'll start out with the characters, and like I said before, they did not change. So, I do have Darkest Nilius, double iron shield, 500 B power, 3 damage, it has built in reroll, which is always nice, and if it lands on an iron shield, it gets plus 7 damage. Definitely more of a damage Bakugan, of course, getting up to 10 on an iron shield. Uh, B power wise, you know, running the green and darkest uh, attribute bonus. You're only going to get up to 9, uh, kind of low in Jugan Rising standards, but not bad, you know, with the right cards or the right roll, you know, depending on your opponent, could be good. I personally just like Nelius anyway, so, so much like Alpha Hydronoid, hard for me not to like that Bakugan. Next up, for the Ventus slot, I do have Ferascal Ultra still. It is an Iron Shield and a Green Fist, B power of 500, just like Nelius, and 5 damage. It also has built-in reroll, always a good ability to have. If it lands on a green fist, plus 500 B power, and if it lands on an iron shield, plus 5 damage. So you can go either way with this Bakugan, going either a damage route and getting 10, or going the B power route and ending up with like uh, 1150. Yeah, 1150. No, 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 no. Sorry, 1100 with the green fists in this deck. So yeah. Uh, very optional, I like it for that reason. And then finally, giving us access to double green fists, so the deck has an even spread of cores, 3 and 3. Um, Falcron Ultra, B power of 900, 1 damage. Shadow Strike, so it can't have its B power or damage reduced. Killer. And then if it lands on a green fist, plus 4 damage. So again, going with a damage slot, so you have... One Bakugan that's damage, well, two Bakugan that are damage focused, and then one that can be versatile. You can either play towards damage or play towards B power. I thought that was really cool. And again, that's why I kept the Bakugan the same, because I think they just synergize well and they fit well together. Um, the core lineup did not change at all. It is still three plus 100 B power, and then Darkest and Ventus Bakugan get plus three damage. Obviously, given the Bakugan that I run, you want to use the cores that are best suited for them, and these are perfect. Then the Magic Shield, three of Darkest and Ventus get plus 400 B power. Uh, you don't want to help your opponent out too much, but you want to give all your Bakugan the most B power possible, which is why I opted for this. I won't spend too much time going on the actual figures, but I do want to show them off a little bit. Here is Darkest Falcron. We got Darkest Bird Boy. Gonna just straight bird up and bird on out of here. Ventus Frascal, which just a quick shout out to the poor Chaos Frascal Ultras that do not have character cards. It is a shame, but here's the completely playable Ventus one. <laughs> Still no news from uh, Spin Master about the uh, Ultra Character card. I was thankful to get the Pyrus Falcron replacement, but uh, still wondering if they're going to ever return to me about that. And then finally we have the awesome one <laughs> itself, at least as far as my opinion. We have Darkest Nelius Ultra. This is the Geogun Rising one, so it has the three heads, kind of the evolved form. So, so reminiscent of Alpha Hydronoid. I mean... Couldn't be more uh, more similar if they tried, I don't think. But 
awesome nonetheless. Really, really like it. Really cool concept. Um, I will show off the figures of the Geogon. So I do use Vipergon, Ventus Vipergon, and then Darkus Arcleon. And here they, oh, whoops. <laughs> here they both are real quick. And now on to the good part, the actual deck profile itself. So again, not a whole, whole lot has changed, just the addition of a few Geogon. Um, I did switch up a few cards, but more or less it is the exact same as the other video. Body Crusher at 3, 1 energy for minus 4 damage, and you get to scan. So the scan is a lot more relevant in this deck than probably any of my, any of my others, and you'll see as we go along. Then three Darkest Apex, one energy for minus two damage, and you get to draw one. Uh, that card is really good following a scan setup play. You know what you're going to draw, and you can decide whether you want it or a random card, you know, a card you didn't see. Three G-Force Drop, just because you do want some debuffs to counter your opponent's effects. One energy for minus 300 B-Power, and you get to scan as well. Then of course 2 Nelius Annihilator, you have to run it if you're running a scan or scrounge um, deck style. 1 energy for plus 300 B power, but if a scan or scrounge effect allows you to look at this card on top, you reveal it for plus 600, so really really cool card. I like it just because out of nowhere you could get B power on any scan or damage effect, or scan or scrounge ability, really cool. Then the first Geogun card, we have Darkest Arcleon, 2 energy for a B power of 1000, 7 damage, so already a pretty good spread, nothing to complain about, really solid, but if it lands on a Green Fist, you get 500 more B power. Given the Green Fist I run, since it's a Darkest Bakugan, you're going to have a total of 1600 B power right there, which is pretty moderate, you know, I don't have a problem with it, I think it's really good. And not to mention, you're going to get the 3 damage off that as well, so you're going to end up with 1600 B power and 10 damage. Very strong Bakugan. Or you could go the Orange Shield route as well, which given this one's boost of plus 3 damage and plus Shadow Strike, which is phenomenal. Using the cores in my deck, you would have 1400 B power and 10 damage as well as Shadow Strike. So again, very versatile Bakugan, that's why, or Geogon, sorry, which is why it's in this deck because it plays very well with the core lineup, the strategy and everything. I think it was just a solid addition. Following that, I do have more debuff cards just as defense measures anyway because the deck doesn't have a lot of flip cards so I wanted counters to my opponent's strategies as much as possible that is why Eldritch Darkest Doom is here 2 energy for minus 700 B power a very strong debuff card for 2 energy next up I did pull a Shadow Slicer from one of the Bakugan unboxing videos it is 2 energy for plus 400 B power and scan it was a scan card. Um, honestly, if I had more of it, I would put it into the Elemental Squad deck profile. But as a one of, I thought it would be really good in this deck profile for now. Sonic Thrash, being a card I wish I had more of, it's Darkest Inventus Factioned. Uh, 2 energy for minus 600 B power, and you get to scan. So a very good debuff card for Darkest Ventus decks. Um, the scan ability just plays so well with what the deck is trying to do. I definitely wish I had more of this card. Finally, the last Geogon of the deck. Um, I won't spend too much time on it. Um, I have already talked about it a lot before. 2 energy, 500 B power, 10 damage. And if it lands on an iron shield, you get plus 1000 B power and minus 5 damage. So depending on how you play it, you know, it's, it's really good. Following that, 2 Baku Fit, 3 energy for minus 6 and scan, but it has the scrounge ability. You look at the top card of your deck, if it's darkest, you can reveal it and energize this uncharged. So just a way to give you some free energy out of nowhere and a debuff card. Ventus Fortitude, another debuff card, but it has the stoke ability, surprisingly, kind of random. Um, but I do have it because again, you want to play some defensive cards. 3 energy for minus 500 B power and you get to draw one. 
Then Stoke, if you uh, when you play this card, you can pay two more energy to gain its effect a second time. Um, that card would probably take be taken out if I had more Shadow Slicer or the Sonic Thrash. I would just take all those out and then sign in other copies of those cards. Following that is three Ventus Aerial Trick, uh, four energy for minus 400 B power and four damage. This is really one of the only debuff cards the deck honestly needs because it plays well off of the scan or scrounge ability. It has this ability down here. If a scan or scrounge effect allows you to look at this card um, on top of your deck, you can reveal it to give a Bakugan minus two, 200 B power and minus two damage. So it being a debuff and even debuffing when it gets revealed is just really nice, or scan slash scrounged, I guess you would say. Um, very versatile, and it just plays to the deck strategy. Oh, <laughs> dropped the cards, but they landed on the, the stack, so that was pretty cool. Then we go into the higher costed cards, you know, the five energy costs. Two Darkest Eclipse, ten damage, so just a big damage uh, giving card. But it does have an ability again. If it gets scanned or scrounged from the top of the deck, you can reveal it to give a Bakugan plus 10. So you would get that plus 10 for free. You wouldn't even have to pay the 5 energy necessarily. And that's why this card is key. Um, you don't want to have 3 because you definitely want to, don't want to see too many copies of the card. But I think at 2 of is good because you can either play it as an energy or use it outright. The same reason why I have 2 Lash and Trash. 5 energy for minus 1100 B power, but scrounge. Look at the top card of your deck. If it costs 5 or more energy, you may reveal and draw it. So this kind of plays well with the other 5 energy cost cards in the deck, as well as it is a powerful debuff towards your opponent. Minus 1100 B power is hard to deal with, unless of course they're Aquas and they have negate action cards. Then I actually do have a Baku Gear, uh, the Root of Darkest, 5 energy to give a Bakugan plus 500 B power and 5 damage. If a scan or scrounge effect allows you to look at this card on top of your deck, you can reveal it to give a Bakugan plus 300 and plus 3 damage, and that is pretty key here, because that ability is going to come up a lot more rather than you actually using the Baku Gear itself. Um, you would much rather probably use that then spend the five energy to equip this but when it comes up late game you can equip it to your bakugan anyway personally i just don't think i ever would i mainly want it there in case i reveal it and then the end of the deck this uh deck does have quite a few flips but you've all seen them before so i won't spend too much time on them two crescent darkest nullifiers Two Feather Walls. Two Darkest Ventus Disarms, which for two energy destroys a hero or Baku gear that costs four or less. Very powerful card. Two Repel Outsiders. And then finally to finish off this deck profile for the day, Darkest Treasures. Five energy. When this is flipped, scrounge, look at the top card of your deck. If it is a non-action card, you may reveal it and make this card cost 3 less to play, so it would be 2 energy instead. It blocks any attack. Um, unfortunately, the deck is mainly um, action cards for now, so this will usually cost you 5 every time. Um, I might change the deck to a mainly Geogon deck. Let me know in the comments down below what you would all think about that, like having a deck that is nothing but mainly Ventus and Darkest Geogon. Uh, because I definitely have enough now that it is possible to make a deck like that, but I don't know if that's something you would all want to see. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button down below. But until then, I will see you next time. And remember, Bakugan Brawl!